on May 4th, 2020, police in Pine Bluff, Arkansas were called to the area of 33rd Avenue and Hazel Street just before 6 p.m. in reference to a shooting. When police arrived at the scene, they found a man named Elvis Kendall, who was lying on the ground next to a white Cadillac CTS. Police could see that Mr. Kendall had been shot several times, so he was rushed to Jefferson Regional Medical Center, where he succumbed to his injuries. During the course of the investigation, a witness came forward that said that they saw Mr. Kendall's vehicle parked on the road and another vehicle, a black Jeep looking vehicle that had gray rims pull up next to Mr. Kendall's vehicle. The vehicle stopped. There was a sound like gunshots and then the vehicle sped away. Police received calls with information about a black vehicle that matched the description of the vehicle the shooter was driving. It was a black Jeep Patriot that had gray rims. This vehicle was owned by a woman named Robin Cones. So the day after the shooting on May 5th, police went to speak with Robin Cones. Robin Cones said she didn't have her vehicle the day before. During the time that the shooting occurred, she loaned her vehicle to a woman named Lashiba Davis. And I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. But Robin Cones did tell police that Lashiba Davis told her that she had threatened Elvis Kendall. Lashiba Davis told Elvis Kendall that she was going to hurt him. Robin Cones also told police that Lashiba Davis told her that she got a hold of Elvis Kendall's cell phone. And she broke Elvis Kendall's cell phone and threw it in the trash can in her apartment. When police located Lashiba Davis, she was sitting in a vehicle with another person. Police asked her to get out of the vehicle, and Lashiba Davis handed a bag to the other person in the vehicle and then got out. So the police asked the other person to get out of the vehicle. They get out. They're holding this bag that Lashiba Davis had handed them. Police asked them, person like, whose bag is that? And the person is like, it's my bag. So... Please look in the bag. The bag had a Ruger 380 in it, which just happened to be the same caliber of some shell casings that were found at the scene of Elvis Kendall's homicide. This person told police that they had allowed Lashiba Davis to borrow the 380 over the weekend and she was just now giving it back to them. Police did question Lashiba Davis and Lashiba Davis said that Elvis Kendall had hit her 14-year-old son, and then she lawyered up. The Ruger 380 was sent off for ballistics testing, and it did come back as being the weapon that the bullets were fired from that ultimately took Elvis Kendall's life. Another witness came forward, one that lived in the same complex as Lashiba Davis, and this person said, that an individual came to Lashiba Davis after the shooting and told Lashiba Davis that Elvis Kendall had been murdered and Lashiba Davis said she already knew. Police were able to find security footage that showed Lashiba Davis pulling up beside Elvis Kendall's vehicle and pointing what could have been a handgun in his direction before pulling off. In July of 2020, Lashiba Davis was charged with capital murder and the shooting death of Elvis Kendall. This case ended up going to trial, and I will say that I looked on Court Connect at a lot of things about this case. Lashiba Davis's defense only listed two witnesses for the defense and one potential sentencing witness, and that's not really much of a defense at all. So in June of 2023, Lashiba Davis was found guilty of capital murder and the jury sentenced her to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now, as soon as the guilty verdict came down, the Sheba Davis's defense team filed a motion for a new trial. That motion was denied, and then they filed notice that they are filing an appeal, which seems to be pretty typical, especially in cases where there are lengthy sentences. There is a lot of evidence against Lashiba Davis in this case, but also 
It doesn't really seem like her defense team put on much of a case. So that could work in her favor as far as an appeal goes anyway. One thing I do want to say is that Lashiva Davis supposedly murdered Elvis Kendall because he did something to her child. But Lashiva Davis's act in committing this homicide took her away from her children forever. In my opinion, and it is just my opinion, it really doesn't make much sense to do this where you're taking out of your children's lives forever because you love your kids so much that you're doing something in defense of them because you really did them worse in the end to not have you in the picture at all. That's really hard on a child, any child, even an adult child that has a parent that is in prison. Again, that's just my opinion. I'm open to hearing everyone else's opinions in this case, and I will update if there is any more information that comes out in the case.